Again, folks, this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. And uh, so proud to be with you today. I live in the United States of America, a country that was founded upon the Word of God. Yet, we live in a time right now where we have rejected the very God that brought us from our very roots, that our forefathers wrote down and penned down a constitution directly guided by God's word, knowing that the terror of not following God's word was something awful. The countries that I'm going to read about to about this morning to you or today in Ezekiel chapter 23, there are some countries mentioned and there are some things mentioned about those countries that brought the reproach of that country to not by God. God himself looking on, God himself saying to those people, to the Babylonians, to the Chaldeans, to the Pequod, to the Shoah and the Koah, and all the Assyrians with them, and all those that were desiring young men, and the captains, the rulers, the great lords, the renowned, all of them, God brought a reproach upon them. He began to show them the results of their wickedness. What was their wickedness? We're going to start with one of the first ones that God talked about. Adultery. What is adultery? If you are married to a woman and you're a man, and you run around looking and going around with other women, you are an adulterer which is what we have today in the United States of America. Adultery is condoned by the average people of today. And as a matter of fact, uh, there are many things that are accepted today that are a result of following opposite of God, following what the devil would have you do, and you come, when you do that, you come down to a great reproach and you come down to degradation and you come down to a place in life to where what is right and godly and proper is not on the scene anymore and the only thing is evil now. And adultery was one of the first things God talked about. Now, for a Christian, and that's, and we're not talking about a person married now to another person, but a person married to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, to God, and dabbles in the world. All of his questions are for the world, all of his answers are for the world. Everything he does involves the world. None of it involves God. It involves asking the world for answers, for your problems and your troubles, and the world does not have an answer. The answer the world gives you is an answer that's not an answer that will take you to the answer for the problem. It will take you into a worse place. And so your answers have to come from the Bible. If you will read uh, Ezekiel 22, 3, 4, and 5, you're going to find some of the things in here are talking about for the, the future. Some of them are talking about at the present. Some of them are talking about a system. The, the halotry of Judah with Assyria. The halotry of Judah with Assyria. Now, the United States of America people, we have committed halotry with our country, and we have joined to godless countries. We have borrowed money from one of the largest nations in the world who is not a nation that serves the God that we serve as a general rule. And because of that, we are going to the world for the answer, and we're going to reap the whirlwind. We are going to this country, 
at any time, given time, could come against us and be lords over us, and we would have to do martial law, what they say. Oh, you think it's something now that you can go out right now, anytime you want, you can run up here to the liquor store, get you a bottle of liquor, and sedate your mind, and get your mind off from all your problems and everything. But if you were ruled by another country, which you will be one day, and this country will say, hey, you don't leave your house. If you get any food, uh, we'll see what you get. And this is it. And you will be rationed. Everything will be rationed. It, hey, you, we're coming to a place to where we spit in God's face uh, with the adultery of not following him, but following the world system. And he's going to come down upon us and say, you're going to get what you're asking for. If you're asking for this, that's why I'm going to let you have it. And when he lets us have it, we're going to know that we got it. Now, we see one of the first things was adultery. The second one was murders. Today, the world, I can't, if I turn my television on right now, this morning, on the news, the first thing I'm going to hear is somebody shot somebody, somebody ran over somebody, somebody killed somebody with a knife, somebody killed somebody with a hammer, somebody killed somebody with a fist, somebody killed somebody this way or that way, somebody broke into a house and shot the people, somebody did this, somebody did that. These somebodies are people who are living in adultery from God, the God of heaven that we serve, and because they are, they're taken into the things that come about after you, you get so far away, which is murders, idolatry. Idolatry is mentioned about any country who has, or any persons who have served the Lord God of heaven, or are supposed to be serving the Lord God of heaven, and a living opposite. That is idolatry. Idolatry, stupid. Forgive me uh, for the yawn. Uh, a little bit tired at work, real hard yesterday, and um, so uh, we we got to watch out this word the Lord uses. Moreover, the word the Lord uses moreover in verse thirty-six of chapter twenty-three. Moreover means that there's going to come some moreover from what we had done. There is a result for that and uh, unto the Son of Man. And we're going to be judged according to our works. And we're going to be judged the things that we do on this earth. We're going to be judged on this earth. And if we want to live like the devil, we're going to reap the devil. And when you reap the devil, you're in idolatry. Uh, in, over here in 37 to 39, it talked about the people of that day sacrificing their children to the fire. Now they were literally taking children and putting them in Molech, who was a metal god with his arms out and there was fire under it and they actually literally put their children in the arms of that god and sacrificed them to the fire. Do you know our children, some of them might be better off today if we had taken them and put them in Molech's arms and burned them with fire than the way we're teaching them and treating them so they end up in prison, they end up in the mental ward, they end up uh, hell on earth in their life because we are sacrificing them to the fire of this world by not teaching them, by not giving them any morals, by living ourself in idolatry and now our children live in idolatry, they follow what we've done and they're married, they don't even bother to get married anymore. People don't even bother to get married anymore. By the way, the government has made a system that it, it, it is eating its own self up, it is nibbling at its own self. There are millions of people on welfare that the, the mother has all these children and says, well, if I'm married, I can't get welfare and get the food stamps and get everything I need for my children. So if I don't get married, we'll just live together and I'll say that I'm not married and I get all this stuff. 
And on top of that, the man himself gets uh, reaps from that, and he becomes a no good person. Hey, I, I can't even get a I can't get a helping hand. Uh, all uh, working every day, I can't find a man that will give me a helping hand. He's got too much handouts, so that when he's not working, he's walking back and forth by the house doing nothing. And I need a pair of hands. Can you think I can get him? No. He's not going to help me. He's going to come steal my stuff and so he can get cigarettes and beer and he's going to get his groceries from the government. All right. And he said another thing. Now, here, you defiled my sanctuary. God's talking to the people that he's talking to here and they defiled his sanctuary. My goodness, the sanctuary of God today is totally defiled. Totally defiled. People that come to the worship house on Sunday today come and, and, and defile the house of the Lord. They do almost anything out of the sun happens under the roof of the place to, that is called the place of worship for God. Uh, you hear every day preachers running off with secretaries that something's happening inside of that place that wasn't supposed to and uh, running off with other women doing all kinds of things and 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 profaning my Sabbath. He said, you profane my Sabbath. You, you, you curse it. You don't, you'd rather go to a football game than you would to come to the church house. You'd rather go uh, and worship the God of sports rather than the God of heaven. I tell you what, I don't believe there's going to be no football in heaven. I don't believe there's going to be any sports in heaven that are going to be worshipped above God. There may be some sports, but they're not going to be worshipped above God. And today, the United States of America worships sports above God. Uh, you have made aliens of other nations. Wow. We've got nations that hate us. We have made aliens of other nations because of, uh, they're looking for a God that's real. And they look at the United States of America and they say the United States of America is a pagan country. We say on our money and God we trust, but we don't trust in God anymore. We trust in that money. And when you take God out of the equation, you come to a dead end. And that's what we're, we're overall headed to, a dead end. We have committed idolatry and adultery and worship to idols with other nations. We have also joined in with other nations and we say, we don't care what God you serve, come on over here. We'll let you worship any God you want to over here in this nation. You can worship any God you want to. Just come to America and worship any God you want to, we don't care. And that's what we've said, we've opened the doors to idolatry, we've opened the doors to devil worshipers, we've opened the doors to Satan worshipers, we've opened the doors to, to anybody, and we, we do it under the name of tolerance. Tolerance is what we do it under the name. We say, you got to be tolerable. I, I Listen, I myself am not too tolerable about a man coming in my house and robbing me and taking my money, what he could find around the house on my TV, all my clothes or everything, anything he can find and I, I, am I supposed to be tolerant of that? No. Am I supposed to be tolerant for another man to come who ha is of a third sex and steal my boy away from the house and, and use him uh, wickedly? Am I supposed to be tolerant of that? No. You, this word tolerance is, is another word the devil uses for no God for me. No God for me. Just do anything you want and I, I'll accept it. And, and we won't even look at God because if we look at God, He's going to make what we're doing a shame. And we don't want it to be a shame. We want it to be brought out of the closet and be whatever it, we want it to be. So just act any way you want to act. I'm not going just after the homosexual right now. I'm going after anybody that puts God away and says, be tolerant with anything that's happening. Be tolerant about it. You, you know, you can't be tolerant. 
you can't be tolerant about things. You have to face value things for face value. If he's a crook, he needs to go to jail. If he's a crook, he needs to go to jail. <laughs> if he's perverted, he needs to be put away, done away with. And the Bible says that all of those that commit abominable sins are abominable people and they ought to be treated so. And back in the Bible day, they stoned those people to death. One would take a big stone and hit him in the head and the rest would pile the stones up on him and they were left for dead. And if we would uh, do a little bit of that today uh, for some of the wicked, instead of slapping their hand, we would be back where we need to be. Well, my time is coming and gone. It's Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. We'll see you next time. Bye.